We explain the English Civil War and the Glorious Revolution. As discussed, King Charles Stuart I was pushing back against Parliament. At the same time, he was increasing overseas expansion, mercantilism, and slavery. He was also fighting wars against the Spanish, French, and the Dutch in the Americas. England was on the move to be a global player. Fun trivia, the Carolinas are named for Charles. At home, the Puritans were quickly taking over the Parliament. They would push for reform, Charles would agree, and then push back. Then one day, his advisor, the Duke of Buckingham, was assassinated. Charles ended up dissolving Parliament for 11 years, giving himself emergency powers to raise taxes on shipping as well as other measures that made the economy worse in the middle of a drought and a widely spreading plague. Then came the War of the Three Kingdoms. Scottish Presbyterians were unhappy with the direction of the Anglican Church. Ireland was unhappy with taxes on Catholics and land confiscation, so English barons promised the Irish less taxes if they attacked the Scots. Charles then called Parliament into a three-week session called the Short Parliament to fund the fighting. Parliamentary Puritans were already suspicious of Charles for marrying a Catholic, and now he was asking them to fund an attack on Scottish Protestants with the Catholic Irish Army. They called themselves into eternal session called the Long Parliament that would last for 20 years. Charles stormed Parliament to arrest five members, at which point the Parliament hid them and then declared war on Charles. In this civil war, the King's side were the Cavaliers and the Parliament side were the Roundheads, led by Oliver Cromwell and his new model army. Cromwell began by purging Parliament of loyalists to Charles. By 1646, Charles surrendered to the Scots and the new model army. He then escaped and was recaught. Cromwell finished by crushing the Cavalier resistance. Cromwell tried, convicted, and then executed Charles with beheading. He then abolished the monarchy in the House of Lords and declared England to be a republic. Once he had control, he also dismissed Parliament forever and ruled as a military dictator until his death in 1658. With Cromwell dead, Parliament was restored and handed the crown to Charles II, who was more willing than his father to bend to Parliament's will, letting them keep the new powers they'd gotten under Cromwell. He supported a strengthened Church of England, Parliament was satisfied with their new powerful role. However, Charles would die, leaving his young Catholic brother James II to take the throne. James II had a Protestant daughter Mary who lived in Holland. Protestants revolted in hopes that her and her husband William of Orange would move to the throne and remove James. Then James had a son and the anti-Catholic forces went bananas. If he was allowed to take the throne, his son would rule Ireland, England, and Scotland as a Catholic. James also arrested a bunch of clergy for sedition. They were acquitted, which showed the lack of kingly authority and led to rebellion. Again, Protestant leaders invited William and Mary to take the throne from James, so they invaded England and James fled without a fight. Parliament decided that James had vacated the throne and took the opportunity to give themselves the power to decide the crown from now on, not birth. James would turn up again in Ireland to fight William and Mary, gathering Catholic support from the Irish and the Scots, but he was defeated quickly at the Battle of Boyne in 1690. He would return to France to spend his days plotting a Catholic comeback with Louis XIV.